Okay, and welcome back. Uh, what we're going to be doing here today is taking apart this soap dispenser. This is an automatic soap dispenser, but it has stopped working. We've had it for about a year, and um, it's the type of thing, I believe it's on. Um, what you have down here is a optical sensor, and then up there you have the other end of it and by waving your hand under it you break the beam and it dispenses the soap but as you can see here nothing's happening and it's on we're having a big problem with um, the batteries um, leaking I'm gonna see what I can do um, to fix that probably some silicon because obviously too much moisture is getting in there and so that is only part of the problem because even when you um, roll the batteries around and make a good contact, it is not dispensing the soap or it's only dispensing just a tiny little bit. And so what I think is the apparatus in there is getting a little bit clogged up. I'm guessing that because of what I'm seeing here. This is where you fill the soap and um, the soap that's spilled has like all dried up and that shows me that it can dry up and so that's what I think is happening in there and so what we're gonna do is take it apart and see what's inside and see what's wrong with it so be right back okay so a quick look inside the battery compartment and you can see we've got a major amount of um, oxidation going on rusting and honestly there's so much here I don't see this unit surviving without replacing the battery tray and getting control of the water issue I don't think it's the soap that's doing it I think it's the fact that it's on the sink and it gets water in it all the time and water evaporating into it so we have to change the way we do it for sure um, if I can rescue it at all uh, but just um, Rotating the batteries like this has made it made contact again and so I can demonstrate that when you stand it up oops, There we go And you run your hand under it it activates but We still have the same problem. Oh, there's here comes some Of course, it's supposed to be dispensing a lot more soap than that so, I'm going to go in there and see exactly how it works, see if the apparatus is up here or down in the base. We're going to find out, so let's open it up. Okay, so at this point I have unscrewed the base. I'm about to open that up, and I've verified that the pump... Okay, let's, there we go. The pump is definitely not in the base. Um, there's just a circuit board. Yeah, get a little bit closer there. And um, it's got the main chip there is controlling everything. And there's probably on the other side of that is going to be the sound chip. And we'll find out. I'll undo those screws. And I guess. That's about all I'll do, and we'll see what's on the other side of that board. So, let's see. Okay, so I was wrong. There's actually, as it turns out, absolutely nothing on the other side. Except, of course, for the contacts for the battery compartment, which is right below it. And, wow, look at the... Uh, Look at the contact there. This thing is less than a year old. It's amazing with the uh, corrosiveness. Uh, I'm going to have to clean that all up and I'm definitely, definitely going to have to come up with a way to seal that battery compartment because um, the water is getting in there and it's going to be completely gone. Uh, the contact in uh, another year. So anyway, nothing in the base so we're going to have to go to the top there and I only see one screw there and so we uh, going in there whoops 
and uh, I think that the back of it's going to be hinged. So I'll unscrew that and open up the hinge. And the way I believe this is going to work is um, I've seen this on commercial dishwashers. I think there's going to be a feeder hose for the soap, and then there'll be like an arm with a roller on it that is on an electric motor, probably geared down, that um, the arm swings close to the hose and the roller will kind of squeeze the hose and squeeze soap out. I think that's the way it's going to work anyway, but let's open it up and find out. Okay, so there was a screw right on the front there like I was just showing, and then on the back there there was a snap and there was another snap on the other side, and I think there may have been one on the back there, but I'm about to pull the top off now. Whoops, and I wanted to show what we got in there. Okay, there is not a snap in the back, just a snap, just a snap on either side. As you can see there, and there. And as it turns out, I had this on its side as I was pulling that off, and I got pretty lucky because there's the seal for the soap, and I almost got soap all over the bench. Which wouldn't be the end of the world, of course. And so what are we looking at here? I believe it's what I was describing. I think that, that thing right there squeezes the tube. And, um, yeah, little electric motor turns that, and there's going to be some kind of a little cam or really should be a roller on there. Oh, um, I of course will find out here in a moment and I will definitely get it operating with the cover off so we can see it working but for the moment okay and then right there oh boy okay it will focus I'll get closer this way Okay, right there is the speaker, and then we have a, the, these are the wires leading to the um, sensor that picks up the light from way down there. So that's sending a beam of light up to the sensor on the bottom side of this, and that lets you know if your, um, your hand has passed underneath. And of course right there is where the soap comes out, you know, underneath of course, right under there. And uh, the rest of it is just an electric motor and it's belt driven. That surprised me, I was expecting it to be gears. And um, yeah, just give me a moment, I'll get the batteries rigged up again and we'll see this in action and maybe even see why it's going so slow but I think I think the majority of the problem is the um, the oxidation and the oxidation is is giving a bad contact and so not enough power can come through from the battery and so the um, the motors not receiving enough power to, to pump well is what I think is happening but we will find out okay be right back Okay, so what I was just doing is I was trying to use the um, baking soda and water and I just grabbed any baking soda and for some reason it's not really doing anything. So what I'll be doing is using the electronics cleaner. This is from Radio Shack and I will just kind of be spraying that on and um, then scrubbing with a toothbrush. So hopefully this will take a lot of that rust off and the same thing with inside the uh, battery compartment here I'll be um, spraying all of those contacts there and I just got that on the camera I'm pretty sure and so now whoops so now I'll take a break and clean the camera and start over okay so at this point I've put the um, base of it back together I clean the contacts as best as I can. Um, they are not in good shape. I have to point this up 
as you can see there, the um, the one in particular there, there's not much of it left and there won't be uh, very soon. But I've got the base back together because we have determined that, oh, the best contact we can make is being made now. And I'll put the batteries back in and then we will uh, demonstrate this action here. But I've been looking closer at this and realized that if you look down in there, tube goes all the way down there and there's something else happening because as you spin this, you see there's no little roller on there. There's no little nub or cam or anything, but those air bubbles in the tube do move a little bit. So maybe there's some kind of a spiraling thing happening on that long feeder there that goes down into there. And so I'm certain, what I'll do now is I'll turn it on and just let it kind of run and see if it works out all those bubbles, all those lines or bubbles. And if it does not, then I'm going to have to go down in there and see what's, what's going wrong because it's not getting its prime on the soap then, if, if that's what the case is. And so uh, we'll see. Probably regardless of whether or not it gets its prime or not, we'll, we'll probably unscrew that and take a look at that because I'm curious. Anyway, so that'll be what we do next. Okay, so I have the um, the bottom all put back together again, and the batteries are in there and making their contact. And I had just briefly turned it on, and then I turned it back off because it sounded like it was priming itself. It's interesting. So I'm going to turn it back on here, and we'll see what happens when it's making that noise. Let's see what we got here. I go. Uh, nope, not doing anything. So, I, you know, got this dish here, hopefully, to catch the soap. We'll see if that really happens. And let me get really close to it here so we can see what's happening. And I'm going to wave my hand under there, see what happens. This may still be a contact problem. Let me uh, get under there, roll the batteries around, and see, see if I can get a better contact. Okay, so let me, hold on one second, let me try that again. I've just rolled the batteries around to see if I can get a better contact. Yep, it's starting to try to do something. There we go. end up with soap all over my hand and a camera in the other. Now when this was when this was brand new I can remember that um, the longer you held your hand like if it just went through quickly it would just dispense a tiny little bit of soap but if you left your hand under there actually I don't want soap all over me so let me See what else will do this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we'll let that school bus go by. Be right back, right back. Okay, so as you can see, the longer I hold that under there, actually breaking the beam, the more soap it dispenses way too much soap um, if you really leave it under there. So, as it turns out, the pumping action of it is not broken. It was merely It was merely a battery contact problem, but we still don't know how it works. So we're going to have to get in there and take a look at how that works. So I'll be undoing that screw and that screw and that screw. And we'll pull that whole thing out and see what's going on there. So I'll be right back. Okay, okay, so I've got the main screws off there. I left, let's see, where am I? 
I left that screw on right there because it looks like it's holding something on on this sub-assembly. So I just took off that screw and that screw and that screw and also these other screws but it looks like that just holds the whole big piece on. So I'm about to pull this out and we'll see what's in there. Let me take this little belt off. It's not going to come all the way off because it's got a guard there. And let's take this off and see what's in there. Okay, looks like everything wants to come off. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Alright, now I just had this whole thing out and um, I was just taking a look at it. Let me switch hands here. Okay. So, um, as it turns out, there's a, at the bottom of that, that's of course the uh, part that was being spun by the electric motor, and then there's a long shaft, and the tube itself is mounted to the other side of this, and this long shaft, metal shaft that goes down, this only comes out one way, you gotta turn it very specific, and there it goes. Okay, and so that, the, um, the hose, goes down into the end and the end goes down into the soap. And so all the actions happening inside of that. Let's see what that is. I'm sorry, the camera gets a little confused sometimes. Yep, and it has screw holes, so definitely has screws holding that together. Anyway, all the actions happening there that is exactly where so sorry about the focus um, closer there just doesn't want to do it okay so um, yeah all the pumping is happening inside that box so we we have to take that part I'll get a little tinier screwdriver and we'll get in there and see what's going on be right back okay here we are I've got it um, got the cover off of there, and I was a little bit surprised on what I found. Let me get zoomed in there. All I see are two Bendixes. Um, one Bendix turns the other Bendix, which is just on a shaft that's on... Oh, let me point. Okay, and this is really tiny, by the way. This is an exacto knife. We're getting, we're getting down there on size. Now, okay, so this is the one being propelled by the electric motor at the end of the shaft, way up there, and it turns this one, which is just on a post that's mounted to the case. And this is the place where the soap comes in, and it's the only place that the soap comes in. So there is no roller on an arm. There's um, nothing. There's just these two Bendixes. So as these turn, sorry if I wander off the screen, I'm trying to reach back here. Okay. So as these turn, it draws the soap in, and as each tooth, the teeth on the Bendix, mesh together, they make a seal, and push the soap through. Now, of course, there's the other half of the case, let me zoom around, it's going to lose its focus. Okay, here we go. As you can see, the edge there... Where am I? The edge there has no opening. It will, it will focus. The edge there has no, no opening, so in the back half there, it makes a total seal, so we've got a prime. And so all soap has to come in through there, which is submerged in soap. So, as it turns out, it's just two Bendixes pumping soap into the end of the tube. If you look straight up in there, that's the, that's the hose. And just um, pressure from those Bendixes forces the soap up the tube and into the, um, the dispenser up there. And so I didn't expect that, and that's why I take things apart, because that's the kind of surprise that you run into, and you would never know unless you went in there. 
And so that's what that is. As it turns out, this has been a very messy, ironically messy, um, disassembly because there's soap all over everything. And I'm washing, in between the uh, times I'm turning the camera on, I'm washing all the soap off my hands so I don't get soap all over the camera. Make it all sticky. But uh, at this point, it's a little challenging. As you can see, these screws, let me get in tight there. These little screws here are, um, by the way, I have macro lenses. I'm going to be doing a video on those here pretty soon. But I don't have them on right now. I should, probably should have done that. So you can see they're very tiny screws, and I'm using the smallest screwdriver I have, and I'm fairly certain I need to get a smaller screwdriver. Uh, actually, I do. I have some somewhere, but I don't have them right now. But anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it all back together, watch it run one more time, and then put it back in the bathroom, I guess. So hold on one second. Oh yeah, I, went, I wanted to show this. Um, I had just explained how the uh, the uh, opening there was uh, flush with it, so it was making a seal, but it's actually overlapped. So I wanted to show how this goes back on. It goes on like a sleeve. See that? And that helps, of course, make a better seal. Okay. I know, I went off camera. Hold on a second. Okay, so here we go. This will show. See that? Okay, and then I'll get those screws back on and get this back together. Good seal. Okay, so here we are. Um, got it all back together and about, and I got the switch on and about to start trying to prime it again because I think we lost all the soap and the... Oh, there it goes. Hope you all saw that. We still have some air bubbles to work out there. So it's getting there, and we've almost got soap. There it comes. All right, we've got soap again. Got a lot of air bubbles now. And chances are I compromised it somehow, or, you know, probably what I did is that I mixed it up so much that there's a bunch of air bubbles in the soap now. Um, and uh, that will take overnight for all that to go away. In the meantime, it's, <laughs> look, it's dispensing really bubbly soap. And it will. There's no way to do this quickly. So, um, that will pretty much do it. I'll put the uh, cap back on and give the final comments. All right, be right back. Okay, and so that'll do it. It's all back together again. And I think the only thing that I forgot to mention is that it uh, lights up there. And I failed to go in there and see if that's uh, LED, but it's probably an LED I wish I had looked. Anyway, it's dispensing soap again for the moment, but I don't think it's going to last very long because as you saw with that battery tray, um, its days are numbered. And I don't know what the solution is to that. If anybody in the comment section can tell me, is it possibly the soap itself that's making it oxidize? Now, of course, the uh, soap dispenser is kept right next to the sink, so there's all kind of water around there all the time. Probably what I'll do is I will try to rig up some kind of uh, gasket to go at the edge of that battery cover to prevent water from going up in there, but I, I honestly, I really don't think water was going up in there. Maybe the kids, this is in the kids' bathroom, it's possible the kids have been splashing and they go. it's going down that crack right there at the top of the black part and then down into the case, that might be what's happening. So I probably need to run some silicone along there and that will probably solve everything. Uh, if not, I'd have to say it's probably not a good idea to use it in the bathroom. Now this came from, as you saw on the, the bottom, it definitely says made in China. It definitely doesn't 
mean that everything from China is a poor quality. We've got some very high quality items that were made in China. Um, it does not have a name brand. This We got it off Amazon. Um, I don't have the box anymore, but it was... Um, it didn't have any information on it anyway. There was no company name. All we know for sure is that it's an A6. And if you see here on the back here, you don't have address or company name or anything. This is all you have. And you saw in the uh, unit itself, it didn't have any information. So we don't know who makes it. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty neat though. Um, especially when it's brand new, it works great. Um, but if you just got one of these, I would um, go out of my way to seal that edge right there because it looks like the, uh, the main problem was battery contact and corrosion. Um, so anyway, I saved this one for, <laughs> I don't know, maybe another month. And, uh, but I was able to get a good look inside and that's what the, uh, the whole gist of this segment is, is to see what's inside and how everything works. And this one surprised me. Hope it surprised you. Appreciate you watching. And stay tuned too for a lot more because I'm taking everything apart. I think I'm going to take that apart next. That's a popcorn maker. I think I'm going to take that apart see how that works. But we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Have a good night.